drop in D and D, you know, and that's mostly old gamers like ourselves. Yeah, I mean that's why I picked up Traveler uh, a couple years ago again. I mean I have all my old Traveler books and everything too, but I just went back to my roots. I thought Mongoose did a great job and really kind of brought that old school roots back to it. But man, if I play another fantasy setting, I have I have hundreds hundreds of books that I can go to. My go to is Ruin Quest. Right? That's what I run. That's what I've been running on Wednesday nights for a while yeah I, or, I looked at RuneQuest and i liked it but i mean when i saw old school essentials because the the first the first time i ever played anything was basic D in 1979 it was the mauve i, I call it mauve i mean it, I, magenta box or with this. uh oh yeah Kevin. um the what magenta basic edition box with keep on the borderlands in it all right June of 1979, <laughs> I got that, and and now you know that's what I played, and and I loved it, and that's what got me hooked on this entire thing. And then, you know, I see old school essentials, and I look at it, and I'm like, holy shit! <clears throat> the thing that I really like about these guys, so they went through back through the old uh, basic and expert box sets, and they took out all the rules that were inconsistent and they took out all the stuff that contradicted each other and then rewrote it so it made sense and they did a, a necrotic gnome did a fantastic job and so uh yeah it, I, like i said i devoured these books and uh it it, it really is uh restoked my my love of fantasy gaming and uh i don't know i'm excited about this new book uh, so i'm like i'm actually <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm actually working on two books at the same time, <coughs> uh, so I'm trying not to go a little bit bibbledy over it. But uh, yeah, one is a fantasy. One is my fantasy campaign setting I'm designing, and then um, the other, of course, is the the sequel to my traveler adventure. <laughs> so uh, just trying to keep uh, that all well, straight. If if you wanna if you wanna steal my fucking don't go dragging my heart around, thing, <laughs> I'm telling that. you, oh, that is hilarious. fucking. I think that's fucking awesome. So now I got some ideas for for uh, yeah. for this. Um, so my plan with this one, I'm not gonna make the same mistake I made with Traveler. My plan with this one is to um, the first release is going to be a the campaign setting hand and player's handbook lore guide and a level one through three adventure. And then immediately uh, before I even release that, I want to have another event one through three adventure and then another, uh, what four through six adventure ready to go so that I can just go bam, bam, bam. And people have stuff rather than, Purchasing the one and then being like, oh, well, we want to see how the rest of the story goes. And then waiting, you know, oh, I got writer's block. You're going to have to wait four years. So we don't want that. Uh, fuck around. Do it like fucking Star Wars. Write uh, <laughs> one, two, and three, but don't send that out yet. You right. know what I mean? Right. Start everybody out at four. Four, <laughs> five, and six. They play that, then go back and go, now hold on. I know you got some questions, so we'll play <laughs> one, two, and three now. And then, and then we're going to go 7, 8, and 9 to wrap it on up. Yeah, no. Yeah. Unfortunately, level progression is not going to allow that. Oh, the time machine. You could just, you know, make the story, uh, you know, make the, make the encounters even. You keep the same characters. Just jump them through a time machine. Makes right. everything. It makes TPKs awkward. Yeah, well, yeah, it makes those a little bit strange. Well, I can tell you from personal experience, putting disintegration rays on floating robots really pisses a party <laughs> off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, fun times. I, I really like 13th Age. I think that's, at the moment, my favorite uh, D&D variant. Yeah, I'll play anything. When I was in third grade, I wrote my own RPG that consisted of in the bathroom being, you know, uh, exterminating germs and fleas. <laughs> it was a 2D6 system that me and 
three of my buddies wrote. Nice. Because we weren't allowed to have Dungeons and Dragons books. Yeah. 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 The, the whole Satanic Panic was a that was a real thing. Yeah, man. It, it, God, oddly enough, I did a lot more demon summoning trying to fight fleas than I did trying to go down <laughs> into the depths of the hells. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying. <clears throat> I've got a buddy who's Jehovah Witness. He has to play star, sci-fi games, Star Wars, that type of stuff. Oh, that's sad. Uh, I'll play anything. I don't give a damn. I just like telling the stories. Okay, so. so Luke says that he won't be able to make it tonight. He got caught up at work and is stuck doing his IT stuff. Yeah, way to leave me hanging as we're going to the fucking right? split the party. Yeah. But all right. Yeah. Well, I mean, m- most likely, um, most likely we're going to want to send George's character with you, right? Because he wasn't here last That's week, true. Right? I mean, George could and, be and it, going it for makes, a spacewalk. It makes, makes sense that he might go with you rather than stay in the spaceship with me. Well, you know, I was really dead set about having that vac suit as a skill, so I've got it. Okay. Well, welcome to Deep Suit Revolution. Zero. We will be picking up where we left off last week. Uh, with uh, evidently George will be joining Bocephus as they uh, head into the um, central uh, science pod. But before we get started, we would like to thank a friend of the Greenwater Guild Hall. None of these are sponsorships or partnerships of any kind. We just like the products that they make. And tonight we would like to thank Dogmite Games. Dogmite Games makes beautiful wooden tabletop accessories for your role-playing games, such as uh, they've got, man, they've got so much stuff. They've got wooden DM screens, uh, dice vaults, dice trays, um, dice towers. They have this really cool thing called the Player Vault that is a combination of all of those with a plexiglass screen that is held on with magnets and etched with your choice of... um, character sheet so that you can write on it with a wet or dry erase pen and take notes um they make amazing stuff all of it's customizable if you order something that's customized it usually takes six to eight weeks to ship but they do have things that are pre-made that are they usually keep in stock so if you're in a hurry you can go to their in-stock items and those ship within one to two business days if you if you were looking to order something customized and wanted it for christmas um no pun intended, that ship has kind of sailed. Um, I'm not saying don't do it, but um, the likelihood of it being here in time to make it down the chimney and under your tree is highly unlikely. Um, but you may email them and ask them um, and see what they say. Um, if you are have been on the fence or if you're wanting to purchase but you're not sure, we have a 10% discount code. Um, that's good for anything on their site if, when you go to your cart if you put in the code uh, friend in all capital letters that will get you 10 percent off everything on the site if you're a fan of our traveler game for friday nights deep night revelation we do have a website via obsidian portal um, the link for that is in the description down below and uh, the adventure logs written in the manner of news service articles uh, right now it's taking the form of news service articles as these guys are bouncing around they're still in charted space so um traveling news service is still a thing um in the future it'll probably take the form of in ship uh news new, you know internal newsletters and things of that manner amongst the crew uh because they will be going out into the black um if you like the page please go to the front page and give us a thumbs up we like to see the fan likes so where we left off last week uh Let's see. Sarda and uh, Jack had gone to back to the ship. They were on the um, the uh, the Ascaya, which is a serpent class scout ship. It is docked along the and hold on here. I will show you guys. It's along docked along the. Uh, actually, it's right under here. The starboard uh, PSM uh, primary structural member. And you talked and went inside, and uh, one of the first things, I mean, you didn't find anything good. You found this weird, uh, this weird stuff growing out of a vent. You, you noted that there was some weird dusty spores in the air. 
Um, and then things went from weird to weirder. The door opened, and in walked this man um, that was clearly overgrown with some kind of fungal growth. And <coughs> he attempted to, to attack you and uh, kind of, you know, they're called shamblers for a reason. That's how they move. Um, kind of attacked in a zombie-like, you know, fashion. And uh, after a while, you put him down. You did discover that, uh, that physical weapons don't seem to hurt them very much, but they do seem to take full damage from energy weapons and uh, fire. Which included stunners. Which included stunners. Um, and I, you know, I really questioned the stunners, but I, I'm going to keep, I'm going to go with it because I looked at it. I, I look at the central supply catalog and stunners are listed under energy weapons. And these guys, they don't have a, 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 a unconscious rating. They're either alive or they're dead. And so I'm counting them. And so, um, yeah, stunners work as well. The the biggest the, the, the biggest problem with yeah. stunners is range, so right sure. Um, so I mean it's it, it's not like he's at a huge disadvantage, but um, you also met somebody named Trinance and Trinance. Let me find Trinance. There he is. Whoop. We also realized the need to carry about 10 burner uh, comm links. Right, yeah. Yeah, because uh, they're, yeah, the external communications of Ray took a uh, direct missile hit, and uh, the bridge faction has locked out everybody from armories and equipment bins, and so there are very few um, transceivers moving around on the ship, and so nobody can really talk to each other very well. And uh, I think Jack gave one of the uh, one of his he gave his transceiver to Trinance, and this is Trinance. Trinance is a Darian, and uh, he basically told you that there are three factions. There's the bridge faction, which is the command crew. There is uh, the mission crew uh, that is run by uh, mission officer uh, Jarla Klein, <clears throat> and there is the engineering faction. A um, unclaimed or, or uh, unspecific fourth faction exists, and they're just called the Star Borders. And the Star Borders, they basically all make up uh, living in this uh, starboard uh, structure, uh, PSM, primary structural member. And um, their whole their whole deal is uh, that they don't really want to get involved. They just want to survive. They're hunkering down with what supplies they can scavenge and are basically living like rats on a sinking ship. Um, not that they're unfriendly. They're not likely to shoot at you, but they don't want to get involved. The, the, <laughs> the wild card in all of this and who destroyed, who actually was responsible for destroying the fuel depot is the gunnery sergeant uh, who just goes by the name Guns. Um, she uh, realized the threat of the uh, contagion aboard and realized that the ship can never reach any civilized port or any planet and destroyed the fuel depot so that nobody could get out. She attempted to turn the guns on the, her own ship, but the, the church just simply won't traverse that way. And so she did minimal damage. Um, of course, the, port, the fuel depot fired back causing the damage that you've seen. So, uh, George and Bocephus have opened the airlock and uh, are cycling the, uh, the decontamination system. And the, you know, the violet light, uh, black light is going over you, uh, UV, and uh, for decon. And you can see on the outside that, uh, or standing up, Standing outside the airlock through the window, you can see um, Jarla Klein, and this is what she looks like. So um, she's looking at you guys, and she seems um, 
shocked and excited that uh, that you are are here. She has no idea who you are, um, and she well the the decon cycle um, is is going to be an hour, you know, um, while you guys are going through decontamination. Normal decon is maybe fifteen minutes, but because because of this level of threat, it's it's like an hour. And so, uh, and she hits the communication. Can we, can we recharge our air yes. uh, thing here in the airlock? Yes. In fact, uh, the, the airlock is, it, once it has, you don't have to wait for, for air. It, it has cycled. You can take your helmets off. Oh, yeah. I'm going to stay in the VAC system. I just want to <laughs> jack into yeah, I'm the, not. Yeah. I'm not going to take my helmet off for anything. For, Damn it, they didn't yeah. fall for it. Uh, so, so yeah, no, you, you, uh, yeah, you can jack into the, uh, the, to the plumbing as it were and, and recharge your, your O2 and, and, uh, cycle your scrubbers. But she hits the, the communications and she says, uh, who are you? I, I don't recognize you. Are you crew of the ship? Uh, no, we're here to help you guys but we need you to help us first oh my god that that's such good news uh what wh in what way can we help you i believe that we're here for the fuel is that what we're i i forget i wasn't here we're, to, we're going to through. the uh to the mission guys and so we've come to uh we've we've come to ask about this this contagion yeah so uh, the, the... the mission crew it is rumored that the mission um the mission faction may have a cure or possible vaccine that this uh this contagion trinance didn't doesn't really believe that um he but he said it's it's not it's not impossible it's not beyond the realm of of reason uh, but he doesn't. He doesn't believe that they have a vaccine. Um, but uh, the engineering faction. So the bridge told you that they couldn't refuel your ship because the engineering faction had manually shut down the fuel lines, and so um, nobody's nobody's really come up with. Well, Sarda and Jack are waiting for Trinance to take Jack's transceiver to the engineering faction to discuss that whole matter via uh via com link um but we'll see how that turns out you guys decided to go and check out this possible cure yourselves and so well and to get information i mean if they're the scientists and everything and we're gonna go and and you know talk to the people that are going to come rescue them. We're trying to let these people know that are coming behind us what they're in for. Uh, we need the scientific data of, of what's going on here. What are these artifacts that they've supposedly got hidden uh, in the other uh, in the other little pod right next door? It looks overgrown. You know, right. are, so, are yeah, as as Bocephus and George and uh, Hannibal had crawled over uh, the aft pod, and so we are right here on this map. You crawled over this pod to get to this pod. You saw that in in the aft science pod that you couldn't even really see in the windows. the The windows from the inside were completely overgrown with fungal growth. And it it looked like a unwashed turtle terrarium. Yeah. And, and that's that's what I'm focusing on in the serpent. The serpent's got military grade sensors and uh, advanced life scanners. So I, I'm just spending the time to try to get a good three dimensional map of the ship and life forms and try to distinguish between the humans and the uh, the the mold or whatever this gro these growths are. So Sarda, um, go ahead and while while Bocephus and George are are. Well, before I do that, well, no. So, Sarda, go ahead and make a sensors, uh, or I'm sorry, electronic sensors plus your choice of either intellect or education role. Sure, and I'm I'm going to spend the extra time just really trying to get go this accurate. It. I mean, this ship's designed to scan planets. 
Right. Yeah, you can give so. your it, it, depending on uh, how much extra time you can give yourself plus two to plus three. I, I just did the plus two. That gave me a twelve. Okay. Excellent. Um, and before I get to back to George and Beth Davis, Jack, what are you doing? I'm just with Sardo. Right? Yes, you are on the ship while he's scanning. Yeah, it just didn't seem like a good idea to leave our ship completely abandoned. Well, <laughs> yeah. not a good idea at all. Well, I'm I, saying, I just stay with the ship. <laughs> well, I will. I will tell you that. Um, so, it's funny because, and I don't. You know, Jeff, you might, um, um, you may have noticed this with the mongoose rolls. In the same book, <laughs> and this is, and I'm talking about the the core rule book 2022 update. <clears throat> there are two trains of thought on this. Is one, it is nigh impossible to to steal a starship, and then, like, you know, half a book later, it's like, oh well, it's really only a formidable fourteen plus hacking check. And then if you have like intrusion software and a halfway decent computer, I mean, you can crack that pretty easily. So I'm like, which is it? Is it is it near impossible or is it, you know, only if you've got a if you've got a laser cutter, you can just cut your way into the... It's near impossible. I, I would guess that it... Well, I don't know. I think that it's, it's also probably... Up to, it's also up to interpretation. How creative are the player characters in order to steal that starship? That Pirates, is, Pirates of Drunax has made it pretty obvious. It's not that hard. You know, you can get a well, laser cutter. You cut right. your way into the hull. You can, you know... Well, yeah. I mean, there's the brute force method. But um, I think if you... If you want to get away with a starship that, you know, isn't venting atmosphere, like there's really not any great way for you to cut into something as small as a serpent class ship and not cause yourself a lot of problems for a week and jump. I mean, you know what I mean? You're you're, you're going to be uncomfortable. I, I, I saw how crazy the anti-vaxxers were about getting into Trader Joe's here in Fresno. <laughs> I, 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 I. I, I imagine a ship full of these people. Right. Uh, they're going to try some pretty extreme. That's <laughs> they true. They might go to go to extreme measures to get the hell off their ship. Well, that that is true. We do have like a little bit of real world experience with this. Um, if that's, if that's, everybody's that's masked up, is it rude to fart next to them? <laughs> I mean, like, you know, if somebody's uh... squatting down in the in the grocery store and they're looking at something on the bottom shelf, you know, but they've got a mask on well, and think, you you napalm that whole area. I think as you olfactory walk by. And, I think olfactory and auditory are two completely <laughs> different senses. It depends on which one you're offended by. Um Yeah. But so uh, yeah, I mean it's possible, you know, I mean if you want to go the entirely paranoid route I would think that a bunch of people that are trapped on a starship or that are spacers for a living, especially in deep space, would probably know that cutting into <laughs> a serpent class is probably a bad idea. Um, so they would try much more um, logical means, which is going to be pretty hard, especially on a ship that is authorized by the Imperial Scout Service. This isn't some you know, uh, junker that you picked up from the the local uh, ship breakers. This is IISS Eskaya. Yes, it was going to the ship breakers, but that's besides the point. It still has all of its junk. It is unfortunately unarmed, but aside from that... Um, or no, did we decide that it... Ha uh, no, it has a beam laser and a sandcaster on it, I thought we decided. Not a lot. Yeah, not a lot. Um, that sandcaster will really help keep people the hell up off of it. That that yeah, is a good the point. Default's a the default's a double turret, but it's, it specifies that it's empty. So right, that may, yeah. it makes sense that they might arm it. I would say that it's a double turret. It has a beam laser and a sandcaster in it. And uh, so, I, I mean, <clears throat> back to my question. Jack, what, being the Marine, I, I would think that you'd probably want to look at this as a, in a tactical situation. Well, I mean, yeah, that's not a bad idea either. I don't know of anything I'm doing. Where the zombies are coming from, anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, you could... Well, I mean, there, 
Hmm. Now this is only a Scout class ship, so there's there's <laughs> there's really only one seat for sensors. So you're watching the door, and uh, so Bocephus and George. So uh, Gerald Klein. Um. So Charlie Klein, um, you guys have plugged in to the uh, um, air or recharging your suits, and um, and you have told her that she that you are here to help. And George says, but that she needs to help you first, and she wants. She says, well, well, how can I help you? We would like all of the information that you have about the spores, the artifacts. Uh, any kind of vaccine that you may have have done, and we would like to take that with us uh, back to our ship, where we will decontaminate it and uh, and give that over to the uh, people that are coming to rescue you. So, well, George, what do you do? You have anything to add to that? I'm going to let Bohebus do the talking. George is going to have you know head on a swivel. At the ready, I'm gonna watch for anything that might appear out of the, the, you know, corner of our eyes. I don't want to get ambushed over here as well, too. So you still got that shotgun, right? Back, George, make a recon plus intellect check. That's what I'm rolling on my dice because I guess you know I'm gonna use the skill that I have the best in. So, what do you got the shotgun? Uh, I have a shotgun at the ready. So, okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. And I've got a gauze pistol. When... Yeah. Well, I've got I've got just like my two auto pistols, but in this case, I don't like shooting that kind of rounds off in the side of ship because that just creates sure. problems. So that is a two twos plus three is seven plus two is nine. Okay. So that really is I have a really incredible recon skill. So you you pick up <clears throat> that. You pick up two things. The first thing that you pick up is that um, Mission Officer Jarla Klein um, seems to be uh, a little pale and she's sweating. And as she as she is trying to explain to Bocephus that uh, that his request is is actually quite complicated, um, and that. You guys are going to have to wait for basically, essentially, wait for the the um, airlock to finish cycling its decon. Come inside and look at the research yourselves because she has petabytes of data. Um, and as she's explaining this, George, you notice that <clears throat> she is pale and sweating, and. Uh, she seems a little shaky, and she, in in one hand, she in her left hand she has a um, hand computer, and like a tablet, and in her right hand she was holding uh, some kind of uh, syringe or hypo spray, and she's shaking enough as she's talking to Bocephus that she drops it, has to bend down pick it up, fumbles that, has to bend down pick it up again. And and then she's she's talking. She doesn't look well. I'm gonna let. Uh, we have a private channel, right? Yes. I'm gonna let Bohefus know that I think that this whole crew here is infected. I'm gonna hit stop on right. the airlock. She's not uh, right. I'm gonna hit stop on the airlock rotation. Okay. Stop. So you're, you're stopping the decon. Hell yeah. Okay. Uh, she's not looking well. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm like, you looking, you know, you're looking kind of sick, ma'am. Uh, I'll let you know that I am a doctor. She she waves it off. She says, uh, no, I've been I've been working on trying to come up with this vaccine and cure, and I've been up for 48 hours straight. So uh, and, I'm if, you're, leave a, if my you're a doctor, trend. you would understand how, how I, demanding that is. I'm going to understand that I'm going to leave my transceiver here in the air airlock and I'm going to back away. Uh, if you will turn to channel A14B9-762, uh, we will uh, we will contact you soon to arrange about a data transfer. Uh, 
you know, help is on the way. So you're you're backing out. That seems to be the smart thing to do right now. She, There's no reason to take a chance, even in back suits. She uh, she drops everything and almost goes into a panic, and she goes up to them and she's like, "Please don't leave us." Oh, you're being left, no matter how this turns. We just we do not have the room on the ship. We are trying to safely go and tell people, you know, we're with the Imperial Scout Service. We, we're not really trying to take, we don't have the room, you know, and, and I, you know, but, you know, if you would like to send a data stream. Wait, so wait, that wait, way, wait. You're a doctor. Please come in and look at my research. Please. Before but can't you, you leave, send that? Uh, before you leave, we, come in and see the research. I've got lab specimens right here. As a doctor, you have to understand how valuable that data is. Oh, I understand how valuable that data is. But, I mean, even if you die, I believe we can retrieve it. Uh, even if we come, just, you know, don't password protect all your files. <laughs> and if you do, don't use a, a fingerprint. <laughs> right. Um, right. Yeah, your fingerprints might blow and <laughs> not pick up very well. But I do have... I do have confidence in my ability to uh, to grow to grow a finger of yours from just a DNA sample. <laughs> my, it may take a while, but uh, my wife yes. always, my wife always gives me shit. She's like, "Well, your phone is locked with your facial recognition or your or your thumb scan. What'll happen if uh -huh. you die? How do I unlock your phone?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm dead. Just grab my hand and put it on the screen, or you can open my eyes and put the phone in front of my face. Uh -huh. It'll work just fine." I don't care. <laughs> do whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's, I'm dead. It's not like I have a say in the matter. Right? That's why. That's why I don't have that stuff on mine. Yeah. I, George, I don't want. I don't want to allow a thief to shoot me and then hold the phone up to my face and get all my money. Right. Right. I mean, my transceiver is is high enough that I mean it should be able to send data streams and all kinds of shit that we can we can talk from the ship. And, uh, and and all of your research and data and everything, it can be presented to me digitally. There's there's no reason whatsoever you to, would to risk. Make a make a medic plus your choice intellect or education check. I'm going to go with education. Uh, I mean, I know Bocephus is a pretty smart guy. Yeah, yeah. It really doesn't matter if I go with int uh, I mean, int or that. Even and if you are I shooting it out your blowhole. You are a pretty smart guy. Oh well, thank you very much. Uh, Just going to make from a medic perfect. skill three. Okay, yeah. So this will be plus four. That's pretty. Good. How about that? Twelve. So you you know that what she's telling you is not. She's not lying to you. You know, as a doctor. That seeing the that seeing this stuff firsthand is infinitely more valuable than just reading the data and the reports. Yes, you can glean information from data and reports, but you can't really come up with anything new unless you see it firsthand. And she is her on her end. She's saying that knowing that you're a doctor. It has really made her excited. She wants you to come in, take a look at this with a fresh set of eyes, because like she said, she's been up working on this for 48 hours straight at this point, and maybe you have some new ideas on I've how to make go, this vaccine man. work. Uh, I've got to go in, I guess. I mean, it's I up mean, to you, well, but just, you, there, you understand is, what Chris, she's saying. Is just don't take, else just don't take, just don't is, take your is, vac suit off. I'm sorry, Jeff, yeah. what was that? Is there anybody else around, or is it just her? No, you can see through, behind her that there are a number of other lab technicians that are working. Now, and we you... all have the same characteristical symptoms that she does? No. I was just going to say, they don't seem to be as um, shaky or, um, or sweating or anything like that. However, gonna, they also appear to be much younger than she is. 
I'm going to insist that all you and all of your personnel keep a 10 meter distance from me and my companions. <laughs> we will distancing. enforce this with lethal, lethal force. This is because you are in a contagious area and I cannot risk getting stuff on the outside of this vac suit that won't die from decontamination. Uh, even though how unlikely I cannot risk the lives of my companions needlessly. The, the reason I'm going in is because as a doctor, uh, if I if I feel that I really need to see the information, and I am kind of a humanitarian, Ting would kill this bitch. But <laughs> Bocephus will go in and look at the information. Ting so. would probably <laughs> Ting would probably <laughs> attach a, a plastic explosive to the door and just be like, "Yeah, you're, you're fucked. Bye, you're fucked. <laughs> bye, yeah. We need we need, we need we need fire extinguishers to be safe, or fire fire, uh, yeah." Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just thinking we're going to torch our vac suits even after the de- the decon and, and just, you know. It's a flamethrower situation. Yeah, whatever it takes, I guess. But, yeah, that's, well, I'll, con- I'll hit continue on the on the cycle. George, how do you feel festival. about this? Do, are you willing to go in with Bocephus or are you going to, or no, do you want to I'm, back out? You know what, he's made the decision as far as I'm concerned, he's the one that has the education and the medical knowledge to do this. I'm going to make sure I got his back. Okay. That's that. That's that. That's my prime role here. I'm going to make sure I got his back. So if anything funny happens, I'm not going to hesitate. Anybody gets out of control, I'm going to shoot them with the shotgun in the face. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's the way to do it. All yes. right. Just keep your helmets on. So, yeah, Jack, we're... you're... You're on the Eskaya, and the comm starts to blink that there is a incoming transmission. Okay. You can't. Uh, and it is... Uh, <laughs> sorry, I started this without looking at who this is supposed to be. It's got your phone number on it. Yes, it's got. It, it's coming. It's coming from inside the house. <laughs> well, no, I mean since he loaned his right, tran- right, yeah. It, it's your. It's your transceiver. Okay. Um. And on the screen pops up a burger, and she says, "Uh, she she says, uh, this is." Chief Engineer Dak Moralder, uh contacting the Eskaya is is this Jack? This is. She says, uh, I understand that your ship is here to rescue us. Not quite. As you, if you can see it all, our ship is quite small. We won't be able to carry anybody back with us, but we were planning to take information and uh, gather a, a larger part of party to come back and help you guys she says uh oh that 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 is excellent that is excellent um <clears throat> well would you be able to take a few of us um i am not the captain uh, that final decision is <laughs> I don't think you guys have even really decided who a captain is. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, We're not going to take anybody off the ship. They're all staying here. We'll send help. <laughs> well, I mean, at I, least you know at least oh. at least not until we can scan to determine someone's truly clean. Uh, that, that's that's <laughs> that's been my big issue is being able to scan a person and tell if they're my, you know. my vote is we do not entertain any kind of passengers until we have a full fuel tank a fuel fuel tank begins the negotiation process for who we take with us that's that's what i believe well, uh, it, it, and my thing is that until we can actually scan a person and confirm that they truly are de- you know clean we can't even think about taking somebody, right? Oh hell yeah! That that's that's part of the negotiation oh, no. process to get them on the ship. I I, yeah. I just mean we're not even talking about taking people until we get hydrogen and and enough to fill our tanks. That's 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 my advice. If if people disagree or you know if you end up having to make an agreement in the heat of the moment, then you know I'll back you up. I'm a team player. I'm not trying to say oh follow me har har har. So. 
Um, so she says, um, she says, oh, I, I understand. Yes, it, uh, I can understand uh, that you have such a small ship. Um, uh, what, what do you need from us? In a word, fuel. We spend all our fuel getting out here to you. We need to get loaded up to go back and send any help at all. She says, yes, yes, I, I, I think that we might be able to assist with that. Um, um, I, I, I understand that your, your ship is very, very small, uh, but perhaps like in your cargo hold, could you take two of my engineers with you? No. Our cargo hold is full. Just say it. I don't want. We were we were in the middle of doing a trading mission. <laughs> well, as I said, that final say isn't mine, but I can't promise you that your aid with the fuel will give you the highest priority. That is my personal promise to you. She says, "Oh." Okay, okay. I, I will talk to my people, and I will uh, call you back in, in, say, ten minutes. And the comm goes dead. Okay, so I'll relay that to the, the gist of it to Sarda and everybody. Well, to Sarda, I guess, because I don't have my comms. Well, we can, we can call well, the I mean, others. You, you've got the comms on the ship, so oh. you, I mean, you, can, you can broadcast on your private channel. So all of you, um, you know, basically... Uh, get the gist of of this and the overall gist really is that uh, everybody wants off this boat well no shit <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think what we can I mean we also need them to cut the power to the weapon systems of the ship if for possible. our departure yeah well I mean I think engineering could do that but you know we st- we still may have to worry about missiles. Uh, d- does Jack have electronics? Do you have I sensors? Do not. You do not have any electronics? I have comms. Okay, so that means you have electronics zero. Roll electronics plus intellect or education, your choice. Electronics zero. Okay. Nice. So, nice. So you see, so on your security, because you are keeping an eye on the airlock, obviously, as you said, you see on the, on the, um, security camera that there is, uh, somebody, this woman who looks, looks like. She looks like this, standing in the airlock, kind of looking in the window, and she's she just kind of with this look on her face. She reaches up and goes on the door or on the on the uh, the the glass window, and is like knocking. And have has everybody? realize that every one of these pictures he shows they have these reddish blotches on them oh yeah, yeah. They, all, they all look like shit oh honestly I mean, just, the only one that looked at that looked normal was trenance and he he had blotches too well, yeah but he's a darian they're always tasty and blotchy <laughs> yeah. i mean that's that's just kind of they're that's just their nature man yeah they're not they're, they're, not, they're not using a lot of sephora Everybody here is either infected or malnourished or like both. Yeah, all of the above. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, you see this this woman like knocking on the window, trying to get your attention. She doesn't smile. She has that that exact expression all the time. She's like at the airlock or whatever. Yeah, she's at the airlock. All right, I'll go to the window. She can. Um. Uh, And she says, she says, uh, so you come to the window, how are, how is Jack dressed? I mean, did, did you, I mean, you got, you and Sarda went through your decon. Are you still wearing your vac suit or are you back in your normal 
dungarees. I'm still in my back seat. I thought we'd be okay. going back out. Okay. But I and will the, take my, uh, and then, my gun with me. So then, <laughs> yeah. She, uh, she looks at you through the window. I'm trying to, I'm trying to decide on her. Oh, yeah, she did okay. So she looks at, when you come to the window, Mm -hmm. she immediately salutes Mm -hmm. and puts her hand down and introduces herself as weapons officer Andrea Rickardson. She says, you can call me guns. Okay, this is the crazy one. She says, uh, nice to, nice to make your acquaintance, Jack. She says, um, what, what, to, what exactly is the plan here? Well, seems you boys got a little bug on board there. She says, you'd be right. Uh, unfortunately, I don't feel like dying with you. So my crew and I are planning on leaving. We are taking strict precautions. We don't plan if we can help it on taking anybody with us. So, yeah, she she's like shaking her head. She says, so I talked to Trenance, <clears throat> and he told me that you'd already been aboard. She says, uh, she says, come on, Jack. You, you look like a military man. You and I both know operational procedure for this level of threat is that nobody ever can leave this ship she says personally if i had my way we wouldn't even be here right now we'd have all been dusted and you wouldn't have found anything but wreckage she says if this ship reaches a populated world and this contagion gets out it will spread all across charted space. Billions and trillions of people will die. What makes you so sure that this contagion is uncontainable? She said it it infects <clears throat> every living <clears throat> and dead thing that it finds. She says and and that does, <clears throat> and if it's dead, that doesn't stop it. If it's dead, it simply continues to grow. Sometimes the dead get back up and start walking around. And then they will eventually, you know, get overgrown to a point where they're no longer serviceable and they'll fall down and it continues to grow until it infects something else. It, it has to stop here. She says, I, I know what kind of sacrifice I'm asking for, but you have to understand. I mean, you, you of all people would understand this kind of threat. You you were, and she's making assumptions here, probably your haircut. She's making assumptions, but she's like, I, I would think that you would understand. I understand it's serious. Uh, I'm not sure... I have your fatalism about freedom. Moreover, I'm not willing to reach that same conclusion for my person. But I can see that you're the roadblock to us getting out of here safely. So, it's very simple. Either you're going to give me your word as a soldier that you're going to let us out of here, or I'm going to open this airlock and we'll settle it the two of us. <laughs> Make a persuasion plus in yeah, plus intellect check. You do realize that she only has to damage your vac suit to make things bad for you. Assuming that she's infected. Well, 
I mean, oh, I, I think th she's infected. I think they're all infected. And the, or that the air in the room she's in is infected. You know, that's <laughs> yes. Everything is if those if that stuff was through the vents, like. I mean, mold I can be really re mold can be really really small, my you know, yeah. microscopic. It's it's already oh, through the entire that. ship. Everybody is infected. And I think well, it wants to you, travel. And and you guys have been filling the tanks of your, you know. Yeah, I I just assume we're as infected as they are. So. Well, you, the O2 would go through extensive sensors and cleaning and stuff that comes right out of those things. I mean, those are made for. So with right? your with your. Uh, So five. It says that you rolled a five plus two plus minus two. Oh, oh minus two. I don't have any so she she steps back from the door. She off off of a sling on her shoulder. She drops a laser rifle from her waistband. She pulls out a snub pistol and drops it on the floor. And she holds up her hands and goes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to you in just a moment. So, Jesus. <laughs> so George and Bocephus, your your airlock is finishing up the decon, and uh, the light is flashing, alerting you that uh, you are clear to open the inner airlock door. We'll need the lady to step back. Everybody needs to step the fuck back. They do. They give you plenty of room and allow you to come in. All right. Then I guess I guess if if George and Hannibal are cool, then we're gonna go on in. And okay. uh, yeah, I'd like to, you know, pull out my little scanner from my med pack and give her a quick scan over real quick. Okay, so the door opens, and of course you can see more of this uh, this central, oh. this main lab area. Everything in here, <clears throat> it, it's almost blinding because everything is such a stark white. Um, and it seems that everything is, you know, it, it's what you would expect for a lab. Everything is kept very neat, orderly, and clean. There are... Uh, multiple labs or lab technicians running around doing various things. Um, roll. Uh, so, what kind of med scanner do you have? It's the the one from a from the. Oh, med... Nope. It does. I don't have one in my med kit because it's not as high and cool as. Uh, so never mind. Well, I, I don't have any of that. You. Look here. I mean, the the tech level fourteen med scanners were available. Or medic medic med kits were available uh, at Tobiah. Uh, if you picked one up, it has a densometer and everything else. I mean, it's a pretty okay. slick device. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, ten thousand credits. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, I'll just remove the ten grand. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. I would think that a doctor would probably want, you know, a, I want a TL fourteen med kit. Yes, right. I, I know. I know. I picked one up just because I in, anything with scanners I was looking at since my sensors are so good that I figured I'm gonna max out that stuff. So you can uh, make a uh, let's see here. You can make a medic plus intellect or education check with a plus three because of your. Or wait, what's it say? For, for, no, 12. Horrible med scanner 12. Yeah, no. You can make it with. You make uh, medic plus intellect or education with a plus three due to uh, the med cap. 11. Okay. So. <clears throat> Your scanner comes back um, that it's telling you with an 11 that she is dehydrated. She is um, 
her pulse rate is through the roof. Um, her blood pressure is high. Um, the scanner comes back reading multiple diagnoses. Uh, the first <clears throat> possibility could be that she is she is fighting an infection. The second possibility is that she is um, simply overworked. And uh, recommendation is bed rest. Yeah, all right. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> well... <laughs> I don't, I don't know that, but I'm going to have to treat her like she is, whether she is or not. So, I mean, that, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell her to sit down and, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and pull out a, a pow, uh, put her on some fluids. Okay. So yeah, you, you hook her up to an IV bag and, uh, and she, as soon as you say, you know, sit down, she goes, Oh, thank you. That, yes, that. That sounds great. And she pulls over a little roller stool and kind of sits on it. You go over and you hook her up to an IV bag. <clears throat> George, you come in and you look around the room. You see that basically out of the airlock, when you look to your right, you see um, basically your typical lab with multiple tables running, you know, uh, multiple experiments are, are, you know, 15 different microscopes and centrifuges and scanners uh, when you look to the left you see that there is a uh, med bay and you see that there are a couple of tables that have subjects on the tables and they are strapped down um, make George, George make a recon plus intellect check Am I looking for the little symbol that says the Umbrella Corp or something? Here? <laughs> oh, nine again. So on one of the tables, you see that there is a uh, <coughs> fairly young um, brunette girl laying on the table who is exhibiting signs of infection. She looks like she probably is anywhere from the age of 18 to 22. Too bad for her. And there's a... There point is that a, out to uh, Bohifa, say, over there. So yeah. There I'll is nod. a lab technician um, working on her. Um Kind of in this manner. And Without except, any except for the at hair, all. that's pretty much what sh her skin looks like. That's bad. That's exactly yeah. what these people are starting to look like. Yeah. And she doesn't have any protective anything on her, does she? Do you mean the, the lab technician? The lab technician... Nothing, right? No. She's got rubber rubber gloves on. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah so she's good. got rubber gloves. You know, wouldn't want to. Uh, wouldn't want to pass. Wouldn't want to get your hands agent. dirty. Right. Yeah. Oh. You, you know. Is probably my, used my, an alcohol swab before she stuck her with the needle too. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let this lady here rest on, on the IV and and I'll I'll join George going into the med bay, I guess. Okay. Well, I'm not going in that med bay. Mm -mm. Oh, no, uh, well, yeah. I think we that's we stay clear. We're we're here to get. Well, I mean, whatever. you guys are still yeah. in your back seats. I mean, you guys, you guys look like you know, uh, you're going into a hazmat situation. That's we what have. this is. Right. That's what it is. Yeah. I'm we're Dustin in. Hoffman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the monkey. <laughs> Gabe says he's the monkey. <laughs> so. Uh, do, do, do they have? Are they claiming to have a vaccine or anything? Uh, well, they have made great strides, and oh. um, Jarla sitting in her chair, she's kind of looking at the back of your helmets as you're gawking at this ridiculous scene in the med bay. She says, um, "We've made great strides in making 
um, a vaccine that we hope to turn into a cure. And all of my technicians are vaccinated. So what... far, they have not they have not contracted the disease. She's calling it a disease. Over how long? Uh, a period of time. She said, well, at this point, it's been six weeks. That's pretty good. That's that's pretty good. It, it, of course, you know, there's the evidence would support that there's also engineering people still surviving and, and there's there's multiple factions still alive and, and not take it over. Uh, what what exactly is is your explanation for that? I mean, because they're not vaccinated, are they? She says, well, there, so there are uh, multiple types of uh, this contagion. Um, the first, the most obvious uh, type is what we call the spore clouds. Um, and she says that, that some have speculated that these clouds move with some form of intelligence. She goes, I don't necessarily believe that. Um, but um, it is uncanny how they can appear in the least opportune moments. Uh, but I believe that that's all coincidence. They're just moving on on the air currents. Um, she, have you done anything to rule it out, or are you just assuming? Well, we haven't been we haven't been able to uh, catch any of samples of said spore clouds yet. But I just find it difficult to believe that a cloud of spores could move with intelligence. Um, she says, uh, but they, that's the first type. Um, and they will cling to uh, clothing suits. Um, if they are inhaled, there is a possible chance of infection. Um, she says, but what we've found is that the most, the most dangerous form of infection is uh, when in contact with the bloodstream. As soon, if there is an open wound of any kind and spores come in contact with the bloodstream, um, they will immediately make their way into the victim's brain and uh, and then continue to grow. And she says, we've come up with, uh, with a couple of, um, well, there, there's levels of, of infection. Um, she says, but what I... What about I, these... She says, I digress. The, the, the second form after the clouds of course are what we are referring to as creepers and and creepers are um small bits of actual fully formed fungal matter uh, that are capable of short uh, small slow rate of movement on their own and they will attempt to seek out uh living uh tissue um, they will then attach to the living tissue and attempt even even vac suits or whatever they they are able to grow small little tendrils that will creep into the fabric and attempt to uh, penetrate uh, living tissue eventually and and they're they're easily knocked off um, you know especially if you have uh, help from somebody else you can get rid of them um, then there, then beyond that, there are people who have been infected and there's multiple levels of infection. Um, the, the first being that somebody is infected, they show flu like symptoms, which is how we first discovered this. Um, they, from infected, um, they tend to start acting erratically, um, tend to act counter to their normal personality um, doing things that they normally wouldn't do. And then from that stage, after it, it, it's really variable on how long that stage lasts, they then tend to become shamblers and are essentially fungal zombies um, that are at the very start of the shambler phase. They still have um, some control over their faculties. They know how to operate doors, for instance, they may know how to operate weapons, um, but they don't have very much dexterity, so they're not very good at it. But as time goes on, 
the fungal growth gets more and more or takes over more and more of that body and they become less and less viable as hosts and then they move somewhere else that we're not sure of and and that's the last stage that we've seen so far um she says now um like i said none of my crew um have my crew since they've been vaccinated are not showing any sign of infection um i mean i think we're on the right track i however have not had any success as of yet anybody who has reached uh the shambler stage the the victim is gone um but if they are at the stage where they are showing um counter productive behavior um there is there has been some success in reversing that okay uh, i think i think the way to do this is to establish a a data link to the ship and and you just uh send us all this all your scan data and your research data uh, and the files that you have pertaining to the artifacts that you've taken on board, and uh, we will we will take a sample of this vaccine with us. Okay. And uh, and we are going to uh, we're going to go ahead, and <clears throat> I think just we should we should just backtrack and head back to the our our ship. I, I believe I. I see what you have going on here, and and you know the thing, the information that you've given me is is very helpful. We've learned a lot about what is going on, uh, but uh, uh, I seriously believe that the more that me, you told me now that there's something that can penetrate my vac suit, and uh, and yeah, I mean you've you've given me the deal breakers on hanging out I, here. I I can go to a safe location uh, that I have and. Uh, and thank you for your time. You need to take some rest. She says, I, I, I agree. I agree. I do need to rest. Um, George, looking at this 18 to 22 year old girl that they're um, attempting to cure on the table, um, it dawns on you um, after looking. I mean, I would imagine make a. Um, Make a sanity check. A sanity check. Yeah. All right. Break I'm talking about George. This Get is not going to go well. Shoot them, motherfuckers. All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, my sanity is five. All right. And uh, George rolled a three. Okay. So. <laughs> so. George, so Bocephus has been sitting here doing all the talking, and uh, Bocephus, you realize that George has not turned around. George is, like, fixated on this this girl. Not but, a necrophiliac, okay? She just needs, want to put she it needs, up. <laughs> she needs mouth to mouth. George, no, she, <laughs> she needs to be put down. George, the, to... the reason for your sanity check isn't the the obvious um you know oh i know what this is it isn't the obvious horror of what's happening it's that this you, is the young girl i'm looking for yes it is yes it is this Damn is it. this is the girl that you have spent all this this retirement money uh searching for okay what i want to do is i want to use uh yeah. telepathy uh, okay. On yeah, on page two thirty, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, the communication of emotions is basic feelings. You know, uh, I'm I'm gonna try to uh, send emotions uh, to my friend George here, uh, calming him down and kind of bringing him back into the here and now. Okay. Uh, I really I really need him to uh, to be here. So. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm fucking up the inside of with, 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 with emotions to get your shit together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's telepathy. Uh, is there like not, an emoji for that? You can just text me. Is that is there something? <laughs> get your yeah. shit together. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically basically what I'm doing. But I'm doing it in a in a way that kind of avoids your the an open dialogue. So and, uh, and I'm actually I'm I'm sacrificing my plus two in psi after this because that I only get that right when there. I'm full. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. So both singles make a routine telepathy plus psi check. Yeah. So. The Skype uh, thumbs up emoji. Just, just shoot that plus across. Plus three. Yeah. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> okay, so. So I got a nine. Okay, so yeah, you aced that, uh, and so for uh, ninety seconds, uh, George is overcome with a calming emotion which kind of uh pulls george back uh from his slack-jawed depression um however george and this will be temporary you do uh you will lose uh one sanity point for the next four hours you are um yeah you are kind of shooken by this uh, but you are overcome with these calming emotions. <clears throat> you kind of uh, get that. Your your brain starts to uh, pump out the endorphins and dopamine and basically telling you, you know, you know everything's going to be okay. She's not going to be okay. But that's just the way it is. George, think of it like this. She is really just a bunch of small stars and galaxies enclosed in a, in a in a body and she can be her own light from within let us go he's talking out his blowhole again yeah <laughs> oh Ephus, you need to write this shit down <laughs> yeah 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 that was- Okay, I will, so I'm down a point of sanity for four hours. I'm not sure how much more of this we can take, but... Well, yeah, I think it's time just, to just, exit. Let's just it's... get whatever data we can, and now I just want to get out of here. I want to. I don't want no. to be here anymore. I'm so, leaving my transceiver. And leave. So yep, are leaving. you guys trusting uh, Dr. Klein to be setting up the data transmission, or are you setting up the transmission yourselves and, and transferring the data to the Eskaya? Uh, we're going to set this up ourselves. Okay. Does either of you have um, electronic computers? I have electronics computers one. Okay. There you go. There you go. So, and does either of you have electronics comps? I do. So, Bocephus, so this is a little bit of a, a task chain. Bocephus, go ahead and make a electronics comps plus intellect or education check. All right. This will give me <clears throat> plus two. Let's see how it goes. I've got sensors and computers shipboard, if that'll Ooh. help. Oh, shit. Ooh, I suck. So, uh, yeah, you're you're setting up the comms, and it's telling you that there's a uh, failure uh, to handshake. Um, Sir, do you see on the comms board that there is a an attempt to, for an incoming transmission? And then you notice that uh, Jack's not sitting in the chair behind you uh yeah i'll so i'll radio to see what i can do to help bocephus with the data transfer and then uh with the intercom say jack is there anything i can do to help uh you okay uh so so to so to help Bocephus, so you get the radio from sarda he sees that you tried to make basically it's (laughs) it's like when you try to do a connection between your phone and your computer via bluetooth and you forget to select accept and it's like yeah we can't do that so (laughs) it timed out so so sarda you can go ahead and make a comms plus uh intellect or education check to to try and reinitialize that connection. Uh, that would be a 10. Okay, so the connection is solid. And George, you can make a um, electronic computers plus intellect or education check plus two for the solid communications connection. Plus two? That's good, because, you know, 
Um, George is going to use intellect because I have a plus two intellect. I'm not very well educated. I'm self-taught. You said plus two, right? Yes. Okay, so that gives me plus five on my roll of three is eight. That is exactly <laughs> what you needed. <laughs> I rolled <laughs> another three, so... <laughs> <laughs> so... So an eight, barely by the speed of your teeth, you are able to uh, get this uh, data flowing, and it, it, it is a large amount of data. It will take some time to transfer to the Ascaya. And I'd like to thank Sarda for being a lot smarter than me and Bohipas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's, this is what I trained to do. I mean, not really comms, but yeah. I mean, I certainly would not hold up as a doctor or a uh, field agent. Well, so. uh, with the data transfer going, uh, we will take a sample of their vaccine with us, uh, and uh, we will just leave the transceiver. They can feel free to to talk to us uh, if if uh, if they have an issue. You know, uh, well, you know, if you're mad, you're in the same pants to get glad. I, I'm, I'm I'm a bit nervous about the vaccine, whether it's made of the uh, uh, of the actual uh, pollutant or not. Right. Well, I, I'm planning on taking all this stuff and reporting it in to uh, the people that are coming to save them. I mean, that's that's all I'm doing is gar gathering information and intel to probably boost our reward for when we uh, get back. That's kind of what I'm. I'm having the positive mental attitude that we will succeed with uh, with no losses. But we'll see how Jack does. But, yeah, that's, that's what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and just uh, – we got the data stream going. I'm going to grab a couple of those vaccines, and we can all just head the door. Uh, if Dr. Lady wants to talk too much, I'll give her a dose of the knockout juice. Yeah, and, there we uh, go. And, That'll and, help and, her rest, right? Yes, yeah, she she'll rest. rest. She'll get some rest, and we'll get the fuck out of there. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and act like I'm tending to her, and I'll pull out some magic deuce and just give her a dose so she can rest. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a deception. Hmm. Deception plus intellect or education check. Ooh, I don't have deception. So. Uh, <laughs> do you have persuasion? I have persuasion. I'll allow you to persuade. All right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm just look. This is this is something that's going to calm you down and let you rest for a little while, and uh, and it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> You're going to be tripping balls, man. A nine. <laughs> okay, that you, she, she, you, dose her, and uh, she slowly drifts off to sleep. Just before she goes to sleep, I'm going to whisper to her, no, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to murder your entire team. Um, you are all dead. This puts me down just to two doses of this shit left. Is That's just how that is. That was probably the most useful thing you found on the planet Neon. <laughs> I'm being real oh, honest. <laughs> yeah, using the hell out of it. So... So, Sarda, you message Jack to uh, see what the hell's going on, Jack. She's waving you on. Okay. Are, are you going to respond to Sarda, or are you going to just deal with this? Is she wearing any visible armor? No. She, uh, she, uh, she is not. All right. Then I'll take off my back seat. Okay. Mano and, uh... <laughs> okay. mano. Yeah, she, she wants to go uh, fisticuffs. I, uh. I put my dagger between my teeth and uh, if he hails me on the comms, I'll just say, uh, I'm solving a problem. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm good enough for me. You, you strip down and, uh, you've got your, your, uh, your knife between your teeth and, uh, roll initiative. For all I know, that means he's taking a crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cleaning my gun. Be in my bunk. Be on holodeck three. <laughs> you got a fourteen? Yeah. 
I rolled double sixes. Holy shit. So you got a six. That's six over over an average of eight. So you're definitely going first. So she squares up and uh you it's your move. What do you want to do? <laughs> okay. So she yeah. she's going she's going bare knuckles and you're like, fuck you, I'm going with a so, K bar. <laughs> so yeah, I had the knife in my teeth just to open the door and then I'll take it out. And okay. if she doesn't have a knife, I say it looks like you forgot your knife. That's fair. I mean, she she had a laser rifle and a snub pistol. She she was going she was going to be ladylike, because she, you know, clearly looks like a lady. I mean, her name is Guns, and she put them down to fight you. I mean, that's yeah. about as honorable as it gets. Right. That laser rifle though is going to be a great addition to our armory. You what? <laughs> You think it's dishonorable to attack? No, no. You're not a Klingon. <laughs> hey, honor has nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just you know what? There's everybody on this crew is bad. Oh, they shot her. So yeah, you want to make a melee blade plus uh, your choice, either Dex or Strength. It's Dex. I got an eleven on Okay, so. That is if you, if you maneuver her near the in the range of the sandcaster, I can sandcaster. <laughs> <laughs> that is a hit, but you said you got an eleven. Yeah. You guys go on melee. <clears throat> she should be able to attempt to parry. Ah, reaction stun, stun, parry. As a reaction, may attempt to parry an opponent's attack as a reaction. In so doing, they inflict their melee. Oh, well, she doesn't have any melee still, so I guess not. So roll your damage for your knife. Uh, so that is th so plus three to that, okay. and then also add your strength modifier. Uh, that's just the okay, so where my where my thing go? There it goes. Oops. Oops, I'm on the right screen. So, what was your total? Uh, 11. 11. Yeah, you uh, you stab her pretty good, but she she pulls the knife. She like grabs your wrist and pulls the knife out, and she. She, um, she didn't like playing this game, so she is going to duck and roll and attempt to grab her snub pistol. You uh, can attempt to make a react. Well, no, you can't. Can you? you know, Jack, if you get infected, we're just going to have to put you down. <laughs> <laughs> Had to put old Jack down. Real sorry about that. Oh, we don't have to put him down. We just need to leave him here on the ship, right? He could, we could point him to the. Uh... I'm bringing some vaccine. <laughs> I don't know how good that'll help if you're already. How are you going to quarantine your pilot? Yeah, that, uh, that's problematic. <laughs> uh, actually, it's not as big an issue as you think. 
our, we have to assume our ship is going to be contaminated. We probably can't dock with Chandler uh, when we get back. We're probably going to need to stay off the station and basically wait until they can decontaminate the ship. Um, it's probably on our ship, in our that, ship. That's, that's what I'm. Well, I don't know if it's in our ship yet, but it's definitely you know there's a good chance that the external part of our ship is contaminated and so we're not going to want to dock with chandler station we're going to want to be off of the station and uh you know go through some kind of decontamination for the external aspects of the ship oh the hydrogen boiling hydrogen will kind of clean off all that through jump space that that is a very good point that's true yeah ain't nothing going to survive on uh yeah that that's a good point. the The transference into jump space would be enough of a radiation burst that you should be clean on the exterior of the ship. I wasn't sure if the bubble that it creates around the ship is suffers that effect or not. It's boiling hydrogen. Well, one of the things that you know is that right? um, UV uh, kills it. You know that um, fire and energy weapons kills it, and. Uh, the radiation flash, and it, this is uh, this is aside from the fact that your ship is traveling through jump space in um, a hydrogen bubble, is that the initial uh, entrance and the exit of jump space is a massive radiation burst. Um, ships that don't have stealth jump uh, that are able to baffle that radiation and distribute it in a more even manner. Or they show up like, you know, starbursts. Everybody knows when a ship makes makes jump or exit. So that would be enough to kill anything on the outside. All right, cool. So Jack, she she pulls the dagger or the knife out, ducks and rolls, and picks up her snub pistol, and. Uh, it takes aim on you. But that's all she can really do. You can make another attack. You'll have to move. Um, so she's now like six meters away from you. So are we in close combat still or not? You would have to move six meters uh, with a minor action, but then you can make an attack. So I get a, like a attack of opportunity for mm -hmm. moving away? No. Nope. You sure? Yep. Okay. Yeah, reactions, you can dodge, dive for cover, or parry. Uh, melee attacks may be made. Neither the traveler nor the enemy may attack any uh, any other target other than those that they are in combat with. Only single range or single-handed ranged weapons such as pistols may be may make ranged attacks on its target in close combat. Um, a pistol can be parried. Uh, large weapons may only be used as clubs. If one combatant moves while locked in close combat, the oh yeah, you can make an immediate immediate attack with a plus two to the attack roll. So yeah, you can make an attack roll with a plus two. Melee plus dex or strength plus two. Yes, that is a plus two to damage plus your strength mod. Jesus. Holy cow. Yeah, that. So, yeah. Don't get into a knife fight with Jack. Jack, no, you don't get any kind of fight with Jack. So that, let's see. Not today. So, Jack, you, um, before she can dive, she dives and grabs that pistol, and as she comes up, you just leap forward and you kind of get her right in the armpit and pull out. And she, there's just a geyser of blood coming out of her and she drops and passes out. She's still breathing, but you can tell that her breathing is labored. You, in your experience, that kind of knife wound, her chest cavity is filling with blood. Um, 
Are you? you know, she's going to be a shambler soon, so, well. <laughs> <laughs> so, in her, in her now open hand on the floor mm-hmm. is a snub pistol, and then laying on the floor is a laser rifle. In space. And then pull her close to me with one hand. Okay. And say, I respect the hell out of you. And stab her. Okay, you're just going to coup de grace? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Guns is no longer with us. And uh, you stab her and end her. And uh, that's the end of Guns. Uh, That was tawdry. Does she have what? Name tapes? No, no. no. she she is just wearing a uh, um, a Deep Night Corporation um, Endeavor jumpsuit. That that's about it. We want to make sure that none of that blood gets on board our ship. Uh, I have this I have this image of Gabe. I don't know if any of you have ever watched Venture Brothers, but he, <laughs> I have an I have an image of him as like Brock Sampson, where he goes completely naked with the the knife between his teeth and starts killing everything. <laughs> Goes into the restroom and the two boys are like, uh, naked. <laughs> so, uh, so you, you grab her, her pistol and you stick it in, it, it's in your waistband. You, okay. what are you doing with her? She's dead. Right. R- right. Uh, Leave her? Yeah. Okay. I'll take her laser rifle. Okay. And then I'm going to get back in the airlock and put my suit back on, but I'm not going in the ship. Okay. And I hit the comms and say, problem solved, but I'm a little dirty. Okay, so um, are you cycling the decontamination? Sure. Yes. Okay. You might want to lay out the pistol and rifle yeah, and everything. I so won't I... put on my suit there, because I don't, I don't okay. decontaminate me. Well, you'll get a tan, too. That's, But that's okay, I mean... You're in space. You could probably use a tan. (laughs) It's not the kind of tan that we want. (laughs) I can't believe you took your suit off. (laughs) Well, that's the only proper way to do a knife fight. I mean, you have to do it in your underwear. I mean, if you're really serious about it. So, so the rifle... If you're naked and you're fighting someone and you shake your hips a lot, you might hypnotize them. <laughs> uh, okay. You were getting sleepy. Uh. <laughs> so <laughs> the rifle is a tech level 11 uh, laser rifle. Okay. Uh, nice. Range 400. Damage is 5D plus 3. It weighs 5 kilograms. Magazine is 100. And traits, it is 0G. And so this this laser rifle, um, unlike uh, the older models, um, rather than having to go to a, a backpack, this... This one actually goes to a power pack that straps to your forearm. So you can plug into this thing and not have this. So, uh, poor Valiant Guns is no longer with us. So, this this data is transferring both Cephas and George. Um, you guys are going, you guys are blitzing out. Yes, uh, you know anybody yeah, that wants to say anything? Yeah, you so. uh, we're, we're done. Okay. Yeah, your your friend is going to take a little nap. You know, uh, when she comes to, she's going to seem a little lost. That's due to you know to be expected. Uh, just treat her kindly, and uh, she will she will be well rested and back to normal uh, in a short period of some time. Okay. They... Being that being that amnesia and confusion is a side effect of the disease as well as the drug you administered. Right. <laughs> this, I mean, you know, that's, that's the fun part of their science. Right, but I mean, they're you just want to 
But I'm saying you want to explain to her that if she comes back and not remembering things, it's because I just administered a strong uh, yes. hallucinogenic to her. Yeah, uh, it's, it's not the I disease. Did. I'll go ahead. Yeah, I'll give her my heads up. Like it was a slight hallucinogenic. You know, it, look, she'll be back to normal in a week or so. It'll be okay. You can tell her that help is on the way and give her a thumbs up. So you, um, you guys exit out the, you go back out the airlock. Um, I need George and Bocephus to go ahead and make a, uh, athletics dex check. If you don't have athletics dex, you can just roll straight dex. Otherwise it's athletics dex plus your dex modifier. Or you can just roll athletics dex. Yeah, I think I'm just going to roll my dex. Ah. I got a nine. Nice. I got an eight. That's perfect. We're doing te- tether procedures on the spacewalk. Oh, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. I, I like to announce that so there's no question. Right. There's no questions. Yeah, well, right. actually, I'm good because I rolled a seven, but I have a plus one deck. So that's Other, the best pull I think I've had all night. It, without, a, <laughs> without a tether, your spacewalk potentially could become a space hike. And so... more like a, It's more like a float. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's very relaxing. Except for the increased pulse rate and the, the hyperventilation. You feel like um, the Gary in Final Space, the, when, the very first season one where he's just floating in space. Right, right. So you guys uh, make your way back along uh, the hull, uh, back to the primary structural, starboard primary structural member, and uh, down to the... Uh, Basically, the outside of um, of the Eskaya. Uh, looking in the windows, uh, make George and Bocephus make a uh, recon plus intellect check. Well, this is my specialty, and I've been making these with rolling fours on my dice, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you've got, being a detective, you've got massive recon. Well, actually, no, I have a I have a three recon I rolled up in my character, but my, my intellect's my highest score is 13, with the plus two, right? So, look at that, look at that. I got to roll another, every time, all my recons have been this. <laughs> so, you got a, a nine. I got a nine again, yeah. That seven's been my highest dice roll all night. (laughs) This is what I was looking for. So, you guys, this is an underside view, which is perfect because the Ascaya is actually right about here. That ship's massive. It it is huge. And so, and normally, uh, this is for George's sake, uh, missing last night. This is actually a flight pod <clears throat> that normally you would have been able to dock there. But the flight pod, as you can see, is completely screwed. Um, it, 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 you can see here, it's been completely ripped from its mooring. It was, yeah, I, I, I watched this. I, I watched the yeah, whole it was pretty. It was pretty battered in the uh, in the counterattack from the automated sur- uh, defense turrets. So you guys are making your way back and you're climbing down. You you look in. There are windows along this uh, along this structural member. Looking in the windows, both of you can see that there there is a body. There is a um, young woman in a pool of blood outside the airlock leading to the Ascaya. Well, I mean, I, I would hope it is time that we chose verse. We would have talked with the crew and, I and they don't might have know that us. Jack told anybody. He just said he was taking care of a problem. Right. All yeah, right. I, like I, say, I, I figured he's taking a dump. <laughs> well then, fuck it. I, I guess I'm gonna look at the body and see what, you know, happened. You know what? What? Are, well, you're outside the ship, looking in through a window. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like medical knowledge, you'll be able to tell, like, it's probably, is it still bleeding out, you know, that kind of stuff? What kind of yeah. wounds are you, they? You can see that there, it appears... Are Jack's footprints all over the ground? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like there's marine boots all over in the blood. What? Um, <laughs> and th that's all he was wearing. His underwear, he was wearing, like, he was wearing, like, Fruit of the Loom, white, tidy whiteies, oh. and marine combat boots. Yeah. That's it. Oh, no. And don't forget, he's got to have his beret on. And a beret. Oh. And a beret. <laughs> so. And, um, and not wearing it like a cow shit on his head. He's do, got do, you, uh, do you want to report this in, George? I, I, I've i left my uh, transceiver in the. Bocephus, <laughs> the you can make a uh, medic plus intellect or education check, but you're at a minus two. <clears throat> so, plus three? How about a 12? Jesus. So, you can tell that, that this woman died of multiple uh, puncture wounds, likely from a combat knife. And this, you're looking at this through a window, and you're like, yeah, she's bleeding out from her armpit. She's she's got another cut in her or another stab wound in her sternum, you know. Yeah, I, I, my thing is is that I don't really have a a big. I guess I'm. Can I use the the vac suits com to talk? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I left my transceiver at the uh, at the mission pod. Man, you guys go through uh, cell phones like. Well, no. because nobody on the ship evidently owns one. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you guys just give them yeah. away. You're at least not like you're Mine's at least not actually, like our yeah. friend who like can look at a phone and the sh screen will shatter. Yeah. Mine's built in. Oh yeah. Well, hey George. Right. Uh, yeah, it looks like looks like somebody uh, murdered her uh, recently. The the blood is still kind of wet there. You see those look like knife wounds. Oh, it's nasty, nasty. So yeah. I, I she, I she, 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 she wasn't she there. Was she wasn't there. Jack, are you guys okay? There's a dead body right outside. Yeah, you've you've got yeah. you've got your vac suit there. You you could hear them talking through the helmet. So not, I mean, not you could, the fact that there, you was, could there was no body there. We, can I just open the door? Uh, yeah, you could. You could. Well, I mean, these guys being outside the ship, if they they you have two okay. means of ingress. So, George and Bocephus, you could either go inside the uh, starboard uh, PSM and walk in through the airlock that is currently docked, or uh, you could go in through the cargo airlock on the Ascaya. That That's your choice. Well, we need to go through an extensive hour-long decon I would, procedure. I would think we that a cargo airlock would not have decon procedure. Okay, then no. I don't want you to gotta, do that. You got to go through the right airlock. Otherwise, we're bringing whatever it is that we just... Yeah, okay, that's in. right. So you guys... He's there in his underwear holding a vac suit. Right. Arm. And before we try <laughs> to go back inside, I want all of us, you know... Uh, I don't know how many woodsmen are around, but, uh, you know, you get, we got to check each other for ticks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm getting like flashbacks of Star Trek you Enterprise. Know, here's the thing too, is because he's a medical physician, and I'm not really that well educated. I'm probably going to believe him and go along. Well, she well, told that, you. That, she she flat out told you about the thing being able to about crawl the through creepers, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like we we've learned about this new phase of this of the of the creature. We have to look each other over and make sure that there's. They, they will they will dig slowly through our back suits evidently and we need to make sure we're not bringing any of these uh, aboard they might jump off of us and and crawl in a crack break your mother's back <laughs> so you guys come in through the port PSM or the starboard PSM rather and yeah there's this there's this young woman um, who is quickly turning quite white as her lifeblood pools around her. And you look through the window of the uh, airlock and you can see you can see the UV light coming out and you see inside Jack standing there in his underwear. And uh, you can see these guys through the window. I mean, you could cancel the decon, open the yeah. door and let them in. Be like, yeah. hey. I'll just open the door. So you finish your decon. <laughs> 
uh, and get well, that you, totally done. You guys want to go through decon too, right? So it's not like you're. Oh well, yeah. You might as well. Yeah, but we don't want to accidentally inadvertently contaminate him oh, yeah. uh, while he's deconning. Uh, contaminated hallway. Yeah, right, right. So. As as I can get. That's true. Well, we have been to a closer place to the ground zero where the artifacts are that kind of spawned a lot of this. And so uh, we might have something that you haven't come in contact with on us. And so what I'd like to do is just, you know, we've got the air in our fag suits. We, there's really no reason to rush. <laughs> we're, we're well armed hanging out here in this hallway. And we'll just let Jack decontaminate, and then George and uh, Hannibal and I can go through the hour-long decontamination. And hopefully by that time, you know, maybe the engineers have have agreed to go ahead and turn the fuel on and let us fuel up and get the fuck out of here. Jack's got the communicator to talk to the engineers. Yes. Well, I mean, they have Jack's transceiver they can talk to the ship they can talk to us okay cool. cool 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 um but but george so as basif is, is explaining this to jack you look over your shoulder and you can see um uh, coming out of one of the uh air vents towards the ceiling of this area it looks like the area is starting to get a little bit foggy yeah, you guys need to get in the in there quick. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move we're gonna move exactly what that crazy um, exhausted doctor lady was saying on how sometimes these spores just come in clouds. Um, I listened. I don't want to be anywhere near what's happening right now. Now you guys cannot cycle the airlock from your side. Jack has to cancel decon to cycle the airlock to open the door. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you just totally changed my argument now because, I mean, that, that's an <laughs> impending threat. I changed my mind. Let me in. Let me in. Let me in. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that, that's a threat. So I don't recon plus like plus. that. Okay. So, yeah, you can see looking, you know, you're you're talking through the window to Bocephus and looking over his shoulder. You can see what George is looking at and you see – what looks like a fog coming out of this air vent towards the ceiling. So I just cancel the cycle and slam the door open and say, you boys want to join me? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a yes, warm in here. Yes. <clears throat> we'll just, this will be one of those moments that we don't speak of later on. <laughs> so... <clears throat> You guys step inside the airlock, shut the shut the door, recycle the decon. As you're looking through the window, you see this cloud kind of move around the the area. Almost it, it, it's clear to you that well, it's not clear to you, but it sure seems like it's moving of its own volition. It's not like when you're on a ship, airflow usually happens in one direction. And this cloud acts like um, like it's hitting multiple airstreams and moving around. Like it's looking for something. And then it comes, it, then it immediately jumps and floods the space right in front of your airlock door. And what you see that this this cloud is, is that it is just what appears like dust particles and it is George floating. watched on a star trek when he was younger so we don't want to i don't want to does this thing look like it's gonna can it come through the door can it come through anything there's no it's, vents it's, we're safe it's right probably going to the corpse yes part of it is going to the corpse the other part of it is basically it it looks like it's attempting to find a way through the airlock but the airlock being an airlock it's not going to get through the air seals all right so yeah all right well if we don't think it's going to come through we'll just finish our bit and and it doesn't you know, we need to have a 
It doesn't seem to be corrosive in any way. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I just think we should talk to the engineers and see if they would give us some fuel. We we have a lot of the information, the streaming. I mean, the that's, big thing that's, is, the big thing is, can we refuel without getting out of the ship? So yeah, we're at a <clears throat> yeah. You're hooked. You're part of the dock where you are hooked up, and I'll I will. I didn't know if we were actually connected. So yeah, where where you are connected to, this is actually one of the shuttle fuel access points. So it has a bidirectional fuel port that is hooked up to your ship as Perfect. part of the docking process. Um, so the hour goes by, you decon. Uh, this cloud kind of hangs around outside the door, and as soon as you're you're done with decon and you guys go back into the Ascaya. <clears throat> and shut the door the feeling that you get is this cloud seems to lose interest and drift on of it seemingly of its own volition um and the scientific Can I read it surface thoughts read there surface are, thoughts there on are it? no hmm. I will allow you to make a um, yeah you can go ahead and try a, a surface touch check hey. so you don't get any surface thoughts but what you do realize is that this cloud not only is made up of small fragments of matter of this entity, but you realize that they're able to move themselves around <clears throat> by some form of telekinesis. Oh. So not Oops. only is <clears throat> this contagion um does it it not only does it have some form of conscious thought it is some form of psionic yeah i'm gonna go ahead and and relay that information on to everybody these you know, yeah this, this is, yeah this is a psionic entity it is probably a uh, a hive minded type thing or it has a central intelligence that controls everything else uh, through psionics, uh, we we should again. There's more more reasons why we should leave. So if we didn't have enough. You have a little bit of time, and I would assume that so the data has come in. Um, yeah, both I'd like to get I'd like to get data from the engineering team in terms of the ship's physical condition in terms of, you know, which, which systems are up, which systems are down, basically explain that, you know, we're going to be leaving to get a, you know, to have a rescue mission. Uh, Do you need to know, the, you need to know the or, overall yeah. status. Of... Right. I, yeah, I need to provide a status of the ship. And so any information you can provide would be wonderful. In the meantime, I did the life scan, Right. With the 12 from that result, you know, just basically trying to figure out how many people, where are the people located, where are the, where is this, where are these spores located, that you, type of thing. You determine that on the bridge, um, there are at least 23 individual neural patterns on the bridge. Uh, in the engineering section, you are detecting 17 different neural patterns. And in the mission pods, uh, mainly the central mission pod where George and Bocephus were, you detect 12 distinct neural patterns. <clears throat> As well, on the, uh, in the starboard uh, PSM, you're detecting uh, 12 additional um, neural patterns that seem scattered throughout the PSM. Those would be the star borders that are just basically um, trying to 
keep their heads down and stay out of trouble and then live through this little faction mutiny dispute. The other thing that you're picking up is you're picking up another, um, it's, it's weird. It's not detecting distinctly as a neural pattern, but it is popping up on the life sensor scanner. So the way life said, it, it's not like Star Trek where you can scan for life signs. Life signs, uh, with your sensors will detect neural patterns so brainwave activity you're detecting trace amounts of neural activity coming from the ship itself and you're detecting a large amount coming from the rear uh, the aft science pod Okay. That's where those artifacts are, and it's overgrown. You can't look through the windows there. That's, that is where that is. Bocephus, I will allow you to make a medic plus education check uh, to look over the data that you've received. Nine. So the data that you're you're picking up is, to you to your scientific mind uh, is fascinating. This is a entirely unheard of life form, never before seen anywhere, and um, it it shows some some traits of being. A fungus that shows some traits of being some kind of contagion but you're seeing signs from this data that it becomes something more yeah you get a call in from engineering and uh, from Dak uh, Dak Dak Moralder and she she tells you she is initiating the fuel pumps and will begin fuel and you can hear that guzzling sound of of fuel being put into your tanks this sound goes on for about 15 minutes and you know that it'll take a while for you to for your tanks to fill but within about 15 minutes you hear a uh, clunking sound and then the fuel lines seem to stop. And Dak Moralder uh, contacts you and says, "Why did you? Why did you shut down the fuel fuel dump?" We did not. And the sh another channel on the ship's comms comes in, and it is the bridge, con uh, bridge of Endeavor contacting Eskaya. Uh. Go, go, bridge. <laughs> That's where we're going to break for tonight, and we will pick up with what the bridge faction has to say to the crew of the Askaya next week at seven o'clock on Friday night uh, with Deep Night and uh, Revelation. Thanks. It was really fun. It's, that was fun. Know, yeah, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to kill the bridge. <laughs> Jeff, go ahead and murder everybody. You know what? We're just going to send Sexy Dancing Jack in his underwear and his knife yeah. to the and he'll just figure <laughs> it all out. Just send Jack in his underwear and a knife. He'll take care of the problem. Yeah. Sure. And his yeah. combat boots and a little beret on top, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Convince well, them to set their guns down and, and then knife them to death. Yep, and exactly. Knife them to death. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, you have a good night. I will see you next you week. Too. <laughs> Bye. All right, thanks, Bye. guys. Have a good night. You too.